Today, we will discuss fire safety in the laboratory. The complexity of laboratory activities requires knowledge and constant vigilance, especially when it comes to fire and life safety. This video will identify three critical components to fire and life safety readiness for the laboratory, recognizing hazards, evaluating the laboratory, and protecting yourself. Begin by reviewing potential laboratory hazards using the UCLA Laboratory Inspection Checklist and the Laboratory Hazard Assessment Tool. Copies of these documents must be kept in your laboratory manual. Once hazards are identified, proper steps can be taken to mitigate their danger. Next, conduct a thorough evaluation of your entire lab, including your housekeeping and storage practices. Begin at the main entrance and take a careful look around. Good housekeeping helps eliminate fire hazards and maintains access to emergency equipment. Be sure all laboratory spaces are clear of all unused boxes, paper, and other combustible materials, as these items increase the potential for fire in the work area. Store or dispose of chemicals not being used, especially flammable or combustible liquids or reactive materials. Emergency personnel must have clear access to electrical breakers and panels. Maintain an unobstructed path of 36 inches of clearance around electrical panels at all times. Maintain clear access to emergency equipment, such as eye wash stations, safety showers, and fire alarm pull stations. Additionally, be sure to keep paths to exit doors free and clear of all obstructions. Care must be taken when storing even non-chemical items. In areas with sprinkler protection, store items at least 18 inches below the level of the fire sprinkler heads. In those areas without sprinkler protection, store items at least 24 inches below the level of the ceiling. Storage of chemicals and flammable or combustible liquids require specific attention. First and foremost, minimize the amounts of chemicals stored, especially flammable and combustible liquids. Acids and corrosives must always be stored in an acid corrosive cabinet. Store acids in secondary containment, separate from bases. Additionally, organic acids must be stored in separate secondary containment from mineral acids. Store water reactive and pyrophoric chemicals separately in approved and labeled cabinets. At any given time, no more than 10 gallons of flammable and or combustible liquids may be kept outside of the storage cabinets in laboratory areas. The vapor content in flammable material containers may still pose a potential hazard. Therefore, properly dispose of all empty or unnecessary containers in the lab. To ensure proper functioning, fume hoods must be carefully operated, maintained, and kept free of unnecessary clutter. Do not use fume hoods for storage. Organize and minimize necessary chemicals and equipment. Keep sash at or below approved level. Keep chemical containers within the fume hood closed. Ensure proper functioning of audible and visual alarms. Fire and life safety preparedness extends outside the lab. The corridors and office spaces surrounding your lab are vital links allowing evacuation in an emergency. In the event of a fire, wedging or blocking doors open permits toxic smoke and gases to migrate from the fire area into the exit corridor, making it difficult or impossible for occupants to exit safely. Be sure corridors are free from clutter or obstruction. Familiarize yourself with your building's evacuation plan. Evacuation plan signs are normally located at stairwells and elevator lobbies. These signs identify exit paths, stairwells, fire alarm pole stations, and fire extinguishers. In the event the building should fill with smoke, exit signs may be your only visible way to finding an exit. When evacuating, close doors on the way out. When pulled, fire alarms sound an audible alarm and activate a flashing strobe within the building to initiate evacuation. An activated smoke or heat detector or a fire sprinkler will also initiate evacuation. It is imperative that you leave the building immediately when a fire alarm sounds. In addition to recognizing hazards and evaluating your laboratory, 
you must take steps to protect yourself. Personal protection equipment, often called PPE, is key to ensuring your personal safety. This starts with your clothing. Anyone entering a laboratory must wear full-length pants and closed-toed shoes. No flip-flops or other open-toed shoes are permitted. We also recommend that your clothing be made of natural fibers, such as cotton, because these materials offer better protection in the event of a fire. Utilize the EH&S Laboratory Hazard Assessment Tool to identify the PPE that corresponds to hazards associated with your particular work area. Always wear the proper PPE for the work you are doing. Laboratory PPE includes a properly fitting lab coat. For some procedures, a fire-resistant lab coat may be necessary. Face and or eye protection. Gloves of the correct size and type for the hazard involved a chemically resistant apron when necessary. Other lab or hazard specific PPE items may be necessary, such as respiratory or hearing protection. Some laboratory tasks involve particularly hazardous materials, such as explosives, pyrophorics, and large quantities of flammable liquids. These tasks require that you practice the buddy system and work alongside a partner. In the event of an accident, you may be disoriented and need assistance. Your partner can provide vital, potentially life-saving help. Familiarity with laboratory emergency equipment is essential. In areas where chemicals are stored, used, or handled, an emergency shower and eyewash station must be accessible within 10 seconds. Know the location of your emergency showers and eyewash stations. Remember, not all safety showers and eyewash stations are exactly alike. If your lab coat catches fire, immediately remove it and use the emergency shower to douse the flames. Use the shower long enough to remove any contaminating material and cool the skin and body. This minimizes damages caused by burns. If a shower is not available, then stop, drop, and roll. Stop where you are, don't run. Drop to the floor, roll, covering your face with your hands, and roll back and forth from side to side to extinguish the flames. When a fire is discovered, regardless of its size, report it immediately. From any campus phone, dial 911. From a cell phone, dial 310-825-1491. Be prepared to tell the operator vital information, such as what is on fire, where the fire is located, if there are any injuries, and if you are going to try to use a fire extinguisher. Do not hang up until the operator tells you to do so. If evacuation is necessary, pull the fire alarm and proceed to the nearest exit. Do not re-enter the building until authorized by the fire department. Personnel working in lab areas should know how to use and properly identify a fire extinguisher appropriate to the materials being handled. With proper training, you should be able to extinguish a small fire if you feel comfortable doing so. Keep your fire extinguisher accessible and clear of obstructions at all times. A properly maintained fire extinguisher will have an attached state fire marshal's tag showing certification date within one year a locking pin in place, and an unbroken seal, a pressure gauge reading in the green zone. Know how to select the appropriate fire extinguisher. Read the label on the fire extinguisher. It identifies the type of fire it can be used for. Fires are classified according to the material that is burning. The types of fire extinguishers used in a lab are Class A, Class B, Class C, and Class D. Class A fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving ordinary combustibles, such as paper products, cloth, wool, and some plastics. Some people find it helpful to remember Class A fires produce ash. Class B fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving flammable liquids or gases, such as gasoline, alcohol, solvents, grease, and oils. Gases such as acetylene, methane, and hydrogen would also produce Class B fires. Some people find it helpful to remember that Class B fires can boil. 
Class C fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving energized electrical equipment or an electrical source. Some people find it helpful to remember that Class C fires have an electrical current. Class D fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving combustible metals. Materials in this category include sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Once properly trained on how to use a fire extinguisher, always remember to use the PASS method. P. Pull and twist the safety pin from the handle. A. Aim at the base of the fire. S. Squeeze the handle trigger and S. Sweep from side to side the full length of the fire. Remember to report all fires, regardless of size. Also, be sure to report any time a fire extinguisher is discharged. This is a reporting requirement of the California State Fire Marshal's Office. In this video, we have identified critical components to fire and life safety for the laboratory. Step 1. Recognize hazards through the use of the UCLA Laboratory Inspection Checklist and the Laboratory Hazard Assessment Tool. Step 2. Evaluate the lab, including your housekeeping practices, storage requirements, and fume hood use. Step 3. Protect yourself through the selection and the use of proper personal protective equipment. Educate yourself on the use of emergency equipment, including a fire extinguisher. Fire and life safety preparation is critical to your health and safety and that of the entire UCLA community. E, H, and S. Protecting your health and safety.